Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. I hope you get something out of it. Um, I, I gotta, you know, I haven't been making too many videos lately because uh, YouTube's been busy demonetizing everything and, and just kind of just tears, you know, what's, what's the use of doing anything. But, you know, at the same time, uh, we gotta get the word out. We gotta share, share this information so that uh, people can become aware of what's going on. And so, you know, um, spread the word, please. Um, anyways um, this one's called uh, using your own plates on your vehicle I uh, recently published uh, this video um, and uh, and I had some of Catman stuff that I had put up here and was talking about and and you know he wanted me to take it down so I took it down and I took his stuff off of here if um, you know in all fairness to Catman he's he's done the research he deserves the credit for the research and and he's like all the rest of us. He's he's uh, it's we're being uh, had reprisals taken against us. Um, he spent lots of time in jail, and and all the rest of it had to deal with all of that stuff, and and so he's entitled to to whatever he wants for what his material is, and he's got a lot of great material, and so um, and and he 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 doesn't have two nickels to rub together just like the rest of us, and so. So he deserves the respect and he deserves some sort of reward for his labor and and I don't fault him. I don't fault him at all. And and so so um, uh, we need to support people and if we don't support them then they're going to quit doing this stuff and and then you're going to be fending for yourself. And so um, you know we need to so support people. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. You should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research, and I don't know everything, but I'm open to ideas. There's four types of people in you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. It's amazing how many people I've talked to that have never seen the movie The Matrix. And, you know, you really, if you haven't seen it, you've got to watch it. Because it is more true than you know. It is really more true than you know. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how on earth can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget, the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, taxi-beating rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Well said, Thomas Jefferson. And there's my car. And notice the plate on the back. Um, I've been driving around like that for six months. Never had any trouble. Actually, I had one problem. And... Um, and uh, we're going to go through what I did with that situation. And, uh, and that state situation is still pending. But I think that I can kick their butt around the block. Okay? So, so because I know that I'm right. And uh, so I think that um, they're going to have a problem. At any rate, other than that, and I still drive around like that too, by the way. I have, um, this happened uh, probably about a week ago. Uh, anyways, keep moving here. This is uh, Carlisle versus United States U.S. Supreme Court. The rights of sovereignty extend to all persons and things not privileged that are within the territory, okay? Not privileged. That's the operative word, okay? Not privileged. And so if you take those privileges, then you just gave up your rights. Basically, you turned yourself into a slave. It's a contract. They extend to all strangers resident therein, not only to those who are naturalized uh, and to those who are domiciled therein, having taken up their abode with the intention of permanent residence, but also to those whose residence is transitory. All strangers are under the protection of the sovereign while they're within his territory and owe a temporary allegiance in return for that protection. So, and that's U.S. Supreme Court. So, um, when you have the government's plates on your vehicle, well, those plates are for government-owned vehicles. So the cops can presume that you're one of the slaves. That's really what it comes down to. So, 
There's other privileges, but that's probably one of the big ones. This is uh, the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966, located at 80 Stat, 1130 and 1131. Actually, it's more than that even, but this is where the definitions part is. And the term motor vehicle uh, means a self-propelled vehicle which is registered for highway use under the laws of any state or foreign country. So again, if your vehicle's registered, then it's, it owns, the state owns your vehicle. And it actually talks about that in Texas codes, too. You may not do this if you carry passengers or property for hire, okay? Now, you got to understand, and I've helped people that are truck drivers, okay? When they're working, they're carrying passengers or property for hire. And so they've got to play those rules. They've got to have a driver's license. They've got to jump through the hoops. They've got to follow the speed limits. They've got to do all that stuff. But if they're traveling to and from work in their private capacity, they don't need any of that stuff, okay? They can still do all of this, okay? But if you're carrying passengers and property for hire, then then um, you got to play that game. Now, by the same token, um, I know, uh, well, I've heard of truck drivers in California, truck tractor trailer drivers, that what they do is they buy their load at point A, so then they're traveling on the highway with their private property, okay? And they buy the load at point A and travel to point B and then sell a load. And um, they do that, and that works fine. Okay, you can do that. But you've got to buy it at point A, so you're traveling with your private property. It cannot be carrying passengers or property for hire. The term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property or cargo. The term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fare, fee, rate, charge, or other consideration or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. And technically, if you were doing it for gold or silver, I'm not sure that they could do anything. But again, you got to pick your battles, and that's probably a battle I wouldn't fight because it's so easy to, to, to do it in a way that... Uh, you don't have to worry anyways unless unless you had an agenda to, to expose that anyways you may do this in Texas or any state including Canada or Mexico but you need to be able to defend it okay you cannot you got to be ready to defend it okay and just like I had to um, and I'm defending it in in my case in Texas because there's always some brain dead idiot out there that is a tyrant and needs to be educated This is Texas Transportation Code uh, 502.003, registration by political subdivision prohibited. A political subdivision of the state may not require an owner of a motor vehicle to register the vehicle, pay a motor vehicle registration fee, or pay an occupation tax or license fee in connection with the motor vehicle. So, I mean, that's perfect if you think about it. You can use that in any state, in Canada and Mexico, because they have to recognize Texas law. They see vehicles down there all the time with Texas plates on them, and so if you don't have, if you're from Texas and you have, as long as you're following Texas law, there's not a damn thing they can do. Now this particular site is on Catman's Forbidden Zone laminated sheet, okay? I do not provide those, okay? You will have to get them from Catman. And Catman has got a lot of material, he's done a lot of research, and he deserves to, be get, to get compensated for his hard work. And so... Um, I encourage you to uh, uh, get those laminated sheets from Catman. Uh, this is Texas Transportation Code 501.004, uh, Certificate of Title Act. This act applies to a motor vehicle owned by the state or a political subdivision of the state. So, again, think about it. It's a certificate of title. It certifies that the state has the title. If the state has the title, then the state owns the vehicle. And so the point being is that that's why you don't want to have their title and you don't want to have it registered because if you do, you, those, are, those are privileges. Now, many people have already bought the vehicle and they decide to put their own private plates on there, and that's okay because the Texas statutes allow that. But, but uh, if you buy a new vehicle and pay cash, 
I would tell them I'm taking it out of state and I need the manufacturer's certificate of origin sent to my out of state address so that um, because then I would have the title. You see what I'm saying? Because that's the manufacturer's certificate of origin. But so that's not as big of a deal as the registration. Let me put it that way. And this is uh, Texas plates that are available. Uh, these I've run out. I'm working on getting some more. This one's actually black and white, but it's actually yellow with blue lettering. It's yellow and blue are Texas colors. And so um, it's kind of a bright yellow with uh, blue lettering. Uh, I've actually ordered some that are similar to this. Um, um, that um, the, these are provided by a friend of mine so I contacted him and he's working on getting some but but even if he doesn't get some I've ordered some too the ones I've ordered are slightly different they're going to be on a gray background with um, with blue lettering and then the sui juris would be yellow bright yellow and um, so um, you know that's the ones that I've ordered and they'll, but they'll, the text on them will be very similar to this. It's not exactly the same. I think it is. Uh, well, I don't have the IDP. I've got everything else. I've got something else where the IDP is. Uh, but, oh, I've got a Texas um, map, a little uh, little Texas map, a little image for the map, a eh? map of Texas, the Republic of Texas. It looks different than the state of Texas. <laughs> Anyways... Um, so uh, these are, if you order some of these, you're going to have to wait. Uh, even if you order some of the other ones that I'm making, you're going to have to wait because they haven't come in yet, and uh, they should be coming in soon, but, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen. That's the back one. The first one was the front one. That's the front one. This is the back one. The ones that I have, there's no front and back. It's just a back. Um, if you want a front and back, then there'll be more then what the price will be I'll show you the price here shortly but uh, but these are are um, the ones that um, when when they when this friend of mine gives them to me or gets them to me then um, it's one plate and one laminated card is what the price is this is the one that I have on my car right now okay and I, there's a lot of reasons that it's not perfect I don't particularly like it but it's it, it's it does the job. Uh, it says Republic of Texas. It's not State of Texas. I wanted to make. I wanted something that was definitely not going to be State of Texas, and so you don't want to get confused with State of Texas, and and so that's why you know um, this one does that job for sure. This is an NSEA plate, and uh, they have good plates too. Um, the thing I like about the Republic of Texas plates is because in Texas there's a statute that says that they can't require you to register your vehicle, number one, and uh, number two is I can accuse them of, uh, of war crimes. And so that's, that's like a double whammy. And so uh, that's why I like the Texas stuff. <laughs> but these are good. It's NSEA ones are good. So, uh, you know, they're, they're perfectly fine. Um, now, um, the court cases, what's talking about this, this is all uniform commercial code stuff, quite frankly, but all of these courts are, are UN courts, okay? And so goods are consumer goods that they're used or bought for use primarily for personal, family, or household purposes. Equipment that they're uh, used or bought for use primarily in business, including farming or a profession, or by a debtor who is a non-profit organization or a government governmental subdivision or agency or if the goods are not included in the definitions of inventory farm products or consumer goods so again this is uniform commercial code 9-109 now and then we got some court cases that go through all of this stuff under UCC 9-109, there's a real distinction between goods purchased for personal use and those purchased for business use. The two are mutually exclusive, and the principal use to which the property is put should be considered as determinative. Okay, so however it's used is got to determine what they do with it. The uh, classification of goods in UCC 9-109 are mutually exclusive. So there's a couple court cases that say that these are mutually exclusive, and so... Um, you cannot, one cannot be the other, it's one or the other, and that's it. That's all there is to it. 
Automobile purchased for the purpose of transporting buyer to and from his place of employment was consumer goods, as defined by UCC 9-109. Okay, so it's you're not carrying passengers or property for hire. The provisions of UCC 2-316 of the Maryland UCC do not apply to sales of consumer goods, a term which includes automobiles, whether new or used, that are bought primarily for personal, family, or household use. Okay, so again, if your automobile is used for personal, family, or household use, it's considered consumer goods. A vehicle not used for commercial activity is a consumer goods, and it is not a type of vehicle required to be registered and use tax paid, of which the tab is evidence of receipt of the tax. And so, again, if you have consumer goods, you don't have to register it. That's consistent with what the Texas codes are saying. So now you've got some court cases that go along with that. Thus, self-driven vehicles are classified according to the use to which they are put rather than according to the means by which they are propelled. The Supreme Court in Arthur v. Morgan, uh, 112 U.S. 495, held that carriages were properly classified as household effects, and we see no reason that automobiles should not be similarly disposed of. A soldier's personal automobile is part of his household goods. Okay, so this even applies to government employees. So anybody can do this, okay, even government employees. The exemptions provided for in Section 1 of the Motor Vehicle Transportation License Act of 1925 in favor of those who solely transport their own property or employees or both and those who transport no persons or property for hire or compensation by motor vehicle have been determined in the Bacon Service Corporation case to be lawful exemptions. Okay, so you are exempt. Exempt means you're not required. Consumer goods. Automobile for transportation to and from work, the use of a vehicle by its owner for purposes of traveling to and from his employment is a personal as opposed to a business use, as that term is used in UCC 9-109 and the vehicle will be classified as consumer goods rather than equipment. In view of this rule, a statutory provision that the supervising officials may exempt such persons when the transportation is not on a commercial basis means that they must exempt them. Okay? They must exempt them. They are exempt. It's not negotiable. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants for a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, shares a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries, and other books and forms. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold to silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the fake money, the military script, the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders. Send me an email for particulars. And this is Texas Constitution, okay? So this is in Texas. The legislature by general law shall exempt from ad valorem taxation household goods not held or used for the production of income and personal effects not held or used for the production of income, okay? So again, that's, that's saying this is the constitutional provision that authorizes the legislature to, to uh, say that no, no one can require you to register your vehicle. And so, and so this is perfect. But the same is also consistent. This is Arizona, okay? Arizona is just as good. In fact, it might be even better. All household goods owned by the user thereof and used solely for non-commercial purposes shall be exempt for taxation, and such person entitled to such exemption shall not be required to take any affirmative action to receive the benefit of such exemption. In other words, I don't need to go and get your permission. I don't need to do anything. And that's Arizona Constitution. Again... So you've probably got some stuff similar to this in your local state, okay? And um, um, I'll bet you you do. I'll bet you it'll be there. Um, some states are going to have something like the Texas uh, Transportation Code that says that nobody can require you to register your vehicle. Some states may not. But if they have something like this, they don't need it, Okay especially something like this in Arizona. Because in Arizona, if you go to Arizona, um, they don't have anything like the Texas Transportation Code. But this is perfect. This is even better. And then that letter from that Arizona senator that I used, 
I mean, I wouldn't have any trouble at all um, uh, doing that in Arizona. This is the Arizona Senator's letter. And uh, this is the big picture. Um, and we'll, we'll, uh, the, the important thing I want you to see here is on the left-hand side, it's, uh, it says that I, Wayne Howard Stump, do solemnly state that this is an exact and true copy of a letter that I wrote on December 10, 1985, while serving in the State Senate of Arizona. And, uh, and it's notarized, okay? So, um, and that's like really important um, because a notary, what the, I should say, an apostille, that, that document is apostille. And the apostille, what it does is, all it does is it certifies that this guy is a real notary. So it makes it as powerful as it can possibly be because the apostille is saying, this guy's a real notary, so nobody's perjured their oath of office here. <laughs> And it's, it's Wayne Stump that's certifying his own letter. I mean, so how, you know, I mean, how can anybody do anything wrong or, or how can it be a fraud, you know? Anyways, now if you get in close, this is the letter. And it's come to my attention. It's sent to the Director of Public Safety for Arizona. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's come to my attention that numerous individuals in our states have rescinded all of their contracts with the United States federal government, the state of Arizona, and each of its political subdivisions, establishing themselves as freemen under the organic national constitution of the Republic of the United States of America. Consequently, they may be driving without auto registration, driver's license, or any other evidence of contract. Because many law enforcement personnel may be unaware of the contractual nature of auto registration and driver's licenses, it is conceivable that this situation may lead to confrontation between these individuals and law enforcement personnel. And it goes on. I urge you to inform yourself and your personnel about this matter as soon as possible. If you would like to be briefed by someone knowledgeable on this subject, please contact me. In the meantime, inasmuch as this procedure is entirely appropriate when properly carried out, I would like to be personally notified of every such instance of confrontation in order that the persons involved and the public officials involved may be uh, surprised of the correct procedure and the appropriateness of their actions on the part of each concern. And then he gives his office phone number and, um, and he signs it. So... Oh, and it goes on. I am requesting that the notified names and incidents along with the addresses and phone numbers of participants of any such confrontations arising from the exercise of a person's freedman status in order to evaluate the outcome of properly rescinded contracts. He's probably going to set up a little network, and I hope he did. But, um, but so the point is, is that there's a letter from the Arizona Senate. Between that and that uh, Arizona Constitution, I don't think you'd have any trouble in Arizona. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit. Don't forget to like this video. Please smash that like button because uh, it helps defeat uh, YouTube's uh, uh, demonetization algorithms. Um, on YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. And on Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. There's the front page of my channel. The uh, subscribe button's already clicked. The bell has not been clicked because it doesn't look like it's vibrating arrow is pointing at the bell uh, uh, click the bell so that you can be notified of uploads now right to travel okay um, the right to travel is part of the liberty which a citizen cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment the right was emerging as early as the Magna Carta and so the reason these UCC ones are so powerful is because it they're affirming the right to travel and all of these courts are commercial and so they, they really, it puts them in a bad position. They have, to, they have to recognize that. Complete freedom of the highways is so old and well established a blessing that we've forgotten the days of the robber barons and toll roads. The right to travel over a street or highway is a primary absolute right of everyone. The use of the highway for the uh, purpose of travel is not a mere privilege, but a common fundamental right of which the public cannot rightfully be deprived. The right of a citizen to use the highways, including the streets and, or, or of the city or town for travel and to transport his goods, is an inherent right which cannot be taken from him. Okay, so they're getting in a contract is what they're doing, and that's why those UCC ones work so good. The fact that, they, that using these citations about the right to travel fail to work every time, and yet the Uniform Commercial Code citations about consumer goods work fine, 
is proof that these courts are all United Nations courts under the Uniform Commercial Code staffed by Roman cult bail priests, and they're making war on you. A mixed war is one which is made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. I have exclusive content available on my website and on Patreon. My website has two subscription levels, and I accept cryptocurrencies. Uh, the basic subscription level is $29.99 a year for the videos only. The uh, uh, platinum subscription level is $49.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited consultations. But there's the unlimited consultations have their limits. <laughs> because I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. All lawyers are liars, right? But I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms. Now, the, the thing is, is that the, the, there's also other limits because, because um, babysitting or a, a reading, um, 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 reviewing documents, okay, that's not included. Uh, babysitting, which is like five emails a day, every day, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, do you do, should I notarize this or just uh, uh, get it uh, uh, say that I swore it under penalty of perjury? You know, I mean that kind of stuff is is babysitting, and so so um, you know I'm not too crazy about babysitting. People have to do their own research. I mean that's what we did. That's all part of our learning process, and uh, you know I mean we're all in this trouble because we got ourselves there. I mean yes they're satanists. Yes they're liars. Yes they're thieves. But, but we've been asleep at the wheel, you know. If we were on top of things, we wouldn't have these problems. And our parents were asleep at the wheel. And they, they went and signed us up with this birth certificate garbage and everything else. They went and ran down and did all that. So, so uh, but um, we have a way of freeing ourselves. And, and so that's, that's what I do is I help you free yourself. Now, there's other people that can do it too. Um, I make everything available for free, um, except for my uh, uh, sub exclusive videos and my Patreon videos, um, because I've been out of work for six years, and so I gotta make a few bucks. And uh, quite frankly, um, we have to start supporting people that that are doing this stuff, because otherwise they'll just quit doing it, and then we'll be fending for ourselves, won't we? Anyways, um, so. Um, I can tell you where to find the forums if you want to make a donation just as a as a buy a subscription just as a donation it's a modest donation there's no doubt about it but it's all appreciated and um, and a whole bunch of people chipping in a little bit adds up pretty fast so so uh, the only power that these new world order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit but I cannot fight all the battles I need more people fighting the battles and being on point I'm currently publishing a video a week um, or trying to. Um, I haven't really been publishing that many in the, uh, recently because of the fact that uh, YouTube has been demonetizing everything and it's just like extremely discouraging. Um, but, you know, we got to get the word out. So spread the word, please. And I appreciate you watching it and I appreciate everybody who does subscribe. It's all very much appreciated. Some of my exclusive content is an Arlington private information share. That's nine videos by itself. Land deed training, there's three videos about that. Estoppel certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training, corporate denial training, toll roads notice and demand training, invoice training, notice avoid judgment training, revocation of signature training, third party witness training, federal habeas corpus training, Revocation of voter registration training, criminal complaint training. There's um, about three videos of there up about that. Now, uh, we're also going to have like this uh, recent I issue that I had with these cops. I'm going to, I filed uh, uh, some criminal complaints, sent them to the district attorney, and so we'll see what happens there. If I get a good result, then I'll definitely be making a video on that because uh, we need to spread the word. Um, anyways, lawsuit training, I haven't got any videos up on that, um, and that's going to be complicated. That'll be several videos. Uh, any other training requests, uh, if it's something that, um, that is something that I can, that I can do that's suitable for what, what I'm trying to do here, uh, then that's fine. Uh, a lot of times people suggest I do some training on something that I've already got training videos on. <laughs> now, if you need to find out 
where my videos are. In other words, a lot of my videos you can't find on YouTube. It's not very user friendly. And so um, you go to my website. My website has a page with all my video, almost all of my videos, and links to them. And so then you can study them by topics. And so I've got them organized based on several topics. And uh, so go to my web page and you'll find all of my videos or all of the, the important ones. So you can, uh, you can research just a link to a YouTube video is all it is. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my two private groups, the Yahoo groups and Google groups. All exclusive content will be available on my website or on Patreon, and you can buy a subscription there. Patreon has a different subscription level, um, and um, so when you go there, you'll see what all of that is. And my Patreon channel is Sovereignty International. And so there's a link at the very bottom there to my uh, uh, Patreon channel. So at common law, there is no precise speed limit. A traveler by automobile must adopt a reasonable speed. Okay, so again, at common law, everything changes. If you uh, take that government-owned plate off your vehicle, everything changes. The department shall erect and maintain the highways and roads of the state. The appropriate signs to show the maximum lawful speed for commercial motor vehicles, truck tractors, truck trailers, truck semi-trailers, and motor vehicles engaged in the business of transporting passengers for compensation or hire. And that's Texas Transportation Code 201.904 speed signs. <laughs> An operator may not drive at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the circumstances then existing. An operator may not drive a vehicle at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions and having regard for actual and potential hazards and then existing, and shall control a vehicle, the speed of the vehicle as necessary to avoid colliding with other person or vehicle, Texas Transportation Code 545.351, maximum speed requirement, okay? And so that's basically common law right there, okay? They're basically telling you that, uh, you know, be prudent. <laughs> and that's reasonable. A driver is one employed in conducting coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle. These are old law dictionaries because the bar members got involved, got mixed up with these blacks and bouviers, and they started changing all the definitions. But the point is, is that it's a driver is somewhat employed. That's the important thing, okay? So you got Bouvier's Law Dictionary and you got Black's Law Dictionary there. A driver is one employed in conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle. Okay, these are all horses and stuff like that, but it's still the same thing. Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. A driver, one employed. Or a bicycle, tricycle, or motor car. Though not a street railroad car. Okay, so again, street railroad car, those are commercial. All they need is a contract. It is impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. All jurisdictional facts supporting claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. My contact information, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com, my website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi, my email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com, my YouTube profile is Sovereign Living, my Facebook community page is deleted, my private group called Sovereignty International is being deleted. Quite frankly, I haven't been to Facebook in months. The only time I go there these days is uh, to, to sell something on their marketplace, and that really doesn't work out too well anyways. But... Um, so the point being is I think Facebook is going to be the next MySpace. And good riddance to them. Um, my Yahoo private group is Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Wynn. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. I've got a BitChute profile, but I don't really have that many videos uploaded because BitChute doesn't allow you to upload anything bigger than 500 megabytes. Um, and I've got my Patreon uh, channel there, Sovereignty International. Never forget, the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, tax-evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 4, Do It Yourself, How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Laws Here, do-it-yourself, no income tax, do-it-yourself, free mail, do-it-yourself, kangaroo courts, 1 through 15, Canada border pigs playlist, bar members and their satanic connections playlist. This is all Roman cult Satanism. 
War is when your government tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. Okay, these are uh, Republic of Texas plates. I like the Republic of Texas plates because I can, um, uh, I've got Texas statutes. I can drive anywhere because they have to recognize Texas law and because uh, it's a war crime. They're engaged in war crimes if they want to take reprisals against me and persecute me for my political beliefs. Anyway, so uh, I have them available in laminated Texas uh, uh, code sheets, okay? Now, I'll show you the code sheets in a minute. Um, these are the, this is the back plate with the unique number identifier. I'm making, I've ordered, this one here is, is provided by a friend of mine, and I've uh, contacted him about getting some more, and he's working on it. But meanwhile, I've ordered some, too, that are going to be similar to this. This one here is it's black and white, but it's actually yellow background with blue lettering. And uh, the one that I am going to be providing is going to be a gray background with blue lettering. And then the, the, the unique number here will be yellow. Okay? And so um, yellow and blue are Texas colors. And so we got to have use those colors. Anyways, um, this is the front one. If you get these plates, if you get them, uh, if, if, uh, if, but the ones that I'm going to provide is just going to be one plate. It will be the back plate only. If you want this additional front plate, that's going to be extra. Um, and I can make front ones. I can have front ones made up uh, with sewage or something on there uh, if you want. I mean, um, you know, uh, but that will be extra. Uh, this is the one that I have on my car currently. And um, um, I haven't had any trouble. I've been driving like it for six months. I've had cops, all sorts of cops pass me, and they just pass right on and keep on going. It's like one time. I had one time I had a Fort Worth cop right on my butt. I left my mail place to pick up my mail, and I was looking through my stuff. And I was it was a big parking lot, and so there was no cars, and so I was just driving across the parking lot. And, uh, and so I was looking through all my junk, and then I looked in my mirror, and there's a cop right on my butt. And I thought, oh, I thought, well, I guess I'm going to get stopped here. So then I figured, well, I guess I better uh, go to the road, the road that's marked in the parking lot at least, and be on the road. <laughs> so I moved over to the road. It wasn't too far away anyways. And, uh, and the next thing you know, the cop is gone. <laughs> so I guess he got told. <laughs> but so the point being is that that was the, up until this thing that happened a week ago, that was the only time anything has happened. Uh, now, a week ago, this cop was a brain-dead idiot, and I showed him the statute, and he didn't even care, you know. And so he wants to be guilty of official oppression, actually, and, and, uh, and a bunch of other things here. I'll show you the, that stuff that I'm, I filed a criminal complaint against him, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, this is the NSCA plates, and these are good plates. I like the ones in Texas because I can claim uh, um, 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 that they're engaged in war crimes, taking reprisals against me for my political beliefs, and, and I've got Texas statutes so I can go anywhere and use them and be able to defend it. I like the Texas place because it can be used anywhere because all states, Canada and Mexico included, are required to recognize Texas law, and this is Texas law. A political subdivision of the state may not require an owner of a motor vehicle to register the vehicle, pay a motor vehicle registration fee, or pay an occupation tax or license fee in connection with the motor vehicle. This site is on Catman's um, Forbidden Zone card, okay? And so if you want that site, you're going to have to get it from Catman or make your own, either way. Um, but that site is on Catman's Forbidden Zone card. And Catman has done a lot of research, and 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 he deserves credit for his hard work, and uh, and so I would encourage you to get it from him. Um, I will not be providing it. Okay, I took my video down because this was because I had those in there. Okay, and he wanted me to take it down. So he deserves respect. He does a lot of work, um, and he's like everybody else. He doesn't have two nickels to rub together. And, and so he deserves to, to get compensation for his labor. 
And so um, I don't fault him for that at all. And so, um, but I'm not going to make another video with his stuff in it. I'll just tell people about it. Um, I'm not going to make another video with his stuff in it because I, I'm not going to have him telling me to take it down. Anyways, um, so, um, but so if you want this on a card, it'll have some other stuff too, but it'll, you have to get it from Catman. And uh, this will also be on that card, okay? This is uh, Texas Transportation Code 501.004, Applicability Certificate of Title Act. This chapter applies to a motor vehicle owned by the state or a political subdivision of the state. Again, you'll have to get that from CapMap. Uh, my cards have other stuff on them uh, that is useful, but you got to decide whether it's something that you need or not. And um, um, you can get one plate and one, I call them a probable cause lamination, <laughs> for three pieces of silver. Now, I don't know how what it says two, but it should be three, and the number is three. It's three pieces of silver, one troy ounce each, or $50 in military script, Federal Reserve notes, flash fake money. Before you do this, you need to be prepared to defend it, and that's why I have the card in my car, because the discussion should end right there when I show them that nobody's required to register their vehicle. I haven't even hardly had to have the discussion. The only time I had to have one, the, the guy was a brain-dead idiot, and, and I was wasting my time. But, you know, hopefully I get him some free room and board in Crowbar Hotel, and, and he learns that way. Of course, then he won't be a cop anymore. That would be good, too. My PayPal is engineerwin at hotmail.com, and you can get the Forbidden Zone laminated sheets with that other information and with those two court citations on them from Catman at catman1 at gmail.com. He's got a lot of other great material. He's got a book that's full of really good material that you can use. And um, he's got ID cards that are very well thought out. And he's the guy's brilliant, and he deserves all the credit and, and for his hard work. And so I don't fault him one bit. I took my video down. I'm not taking another one down. So I'm just not going to put anything up there that might cause him to want me to take it down. Before any police officer stops you, they must have probable cause. Article 4 and Amendment prohibits law enforcement officers from arresting citizens without probable cause. The Fourth Amendment. Arrest made without probable cause violates the Fourth Amendment. Holding involuntary civil confinement as a massive curtailment of liberty is tantamount to the infringement of being arrested and can be made only upon probable cause. This is my card. And this is what I have probable cause and then and and that will be good anywhere okay you'll be able to use that anywhere in, a, in the USA uh, you could probably use it in Canada as well um, but it'd be good to have some Canadian citations to back it up good but they're gonna be the same um, and then the class C misdemeanors in Texas they'll be good in Texas but that's it although this capius is not a warrant of arrest that'll be good elsewhere if you can show that they're using a capius um, and then and then the definition of a crime in Texas uh, won't do you any good anywhere but Texas uh, and then so then uh, perhaps it should be mentioned that as a general rule a person is placed under arrest when he's deprived of his liberty by an officer who intends to arrest him it is not always necessary for the officer to make a formal declaration of arrest and uh, the stopping of an automobile by a highway patrol officer for inspection of a driver's license or any other purpose where it's accomplished by the authority of the officer is an arrest. And so um, they try and tell you, oh, you're just being detained. Bull, don't feed me your crap. This is an arrest. A motorist stopped by a traffic officer for a traffic offense would be considered arrested, even if the motorist was not specifically informed that he had been arrested. Any restraint, however slight, upon a mother's liberty to, co to come and go as one pleases constitutes an arrest. And that's the back side of my card. And so then it goes through false arrest and arrest and some penal code stuff that we're going to go through shortly. That's, that's really good in Texas, okay? But again, the Texas, the penal code stuff is only going to be good in Texas. The false arrest and the arrest stuff is good anywhere. But the penal code stuff is only good in Texas. 
The test for the police officer's sufficient basis for probable cause. Did the officer have a sufficient basis to make a practical, common sense decision that a fair probability of crime existed? Once the officer's actions fail to satisfy this test, it may appear that no reasonably objective officer could have believed that probable cause existed to make an arrest. Um, and that's uh, actually taken from uh, Ninth, uh, Ninth Circuit uh, Court, uh, Court of Appeals, and they're citing uh, U.S. Supreme Court, the Fifth, Seventh, Eighth, and Ninth Circuits, and, and they held by definition, probable cause to arrest can only exist in relation to criminal conduct. Civil disputes cannot give rise to probable cause. So it's got to be a crime. No crime, no probable cause. An offense under this section, this is Class C misdemeanors. Okay, a Class C misdemeanor is not a crime. An offense under this section is a Class C misdemeanor if the offense for which the actor's appearance is required is punishable by fine only. That's Texas Penal Code. Remember, we are talking about... Um, well, that's actually in my other video, <laughs> Texas Penal Code. Bail jumping and failure to appear. And then uh, conviction of a Class C misdemeanor does not impose any legal disability or disadvantage. That's Penal Code 12.03. And then an individual judged guilty of a Class C misdemeanor shall be punished by fine only, not to exceed 500 bucks. So a Class C misdemeanor is not a crime. That's Texas Penal Code 12.23. And then a crime means a misdemeanor punishable by confinement or jail or a felony. And a defendant means a person accused of a crime. So, so again, a Class C misdemeanor is not a crime. And if they start accusing you of being a defendant, they're saying, well, we prejudged this case. You're guilty already. And so that just, that just gives you ammunition to use against them. In Texas, a police uh, may not arrest you for a Class C misdemeanor, and if they do, it's false arrest. And this is on my card as well. The only thing the plaintiff needs to do is allege false arrest is either uh, one, that the defendant made an arrest or imprisonment, or two, that the defendant affirmatively instigated, encouraged, incited, or caused the arrest or imprisonment. When the plaintiff has shown that he was arrested, imprisoned, or restrained of his liberty by the defendant, the law presumes it to be lawful. The burden is upon the defendant to show that the arrest was by the authority of law. Okay, so what they're saying here is you've got to file a lawsuit. Okay, you've got to be the plaintiff, and he's got to be the defendant. You've got to file a lawsuit. That's the only way you're going to be able to assert these kinds of rights. But you can bring it up in the hearing, and uh, matter of fact, you make a counterclaim. Okay, and, uh, and that creates a big problem. And uh, so you file a criminal complaint. If the owner of the motor vehicle fails to timely pay the amount of the civil penalty imposed against the owner, an arrest warrant may not be issued for the owner. They may not issue an arrest warrant under any circumstances. The imposition of the civil penalty may not be recorded in the owner's driving record. They cannot record anything against you. What they do is they issue a capius, okay? Well, a capius is not a warrant of arrest. If a cop stopped me for speeding in Texas, I'd say, I don't have a problem providing whatever you need, but I've got a couple questions first. What's your probable cause for stopping me? And then if he stopped me for, if he said that he stopped me for speeding, he will, uh, he'll say that, and I'll say, speeding's a Class C misdemeanor, and a Class C misdemeanor is not a crime in Texas, and probable cause requires a crime. So I ask you again, what's your probable cause for stopping me, or should I just be on my way? And again, um, again, the more, more he does, the more trouble he's going to get into. Um, because of abuse of official capacity. This is Texas Penal Code, Section 39.02, Abuse of Official Capacity. A public servant commits an offense if, with intent to obtain a benefit or with intent to harm or defraud another, he intentionally or knowingly misuses government property, services, personnel, or any other thing of value belonging to the government that has come into the public servant's custody or possession by virtue of the public servant's office or employment. Well, think about it. He turned on those emergency lights to stop you. I've, I've, that's exactly what they are. And if it's a Class C misdemeanor, there's no crime. 
which means there's no emergency. And so he's using it to collect revenue is what he's doing. That's not an emergency. And so that's abuse of official capacity. That's perjury of oath. That's a whole bunch of things. Anyways, the next one is Texas Penal Code 3802, failure to identify. This is the one they always like to use against you. And so this is what it says, because we all need to know what it says so we can um, break it off in our butt. Anyways, a person commits an offense if he intentionally refuses to give his name, residence, address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person and requested the information. Well, if you haven't been lawfully arrested, okay, if it's a Class C misdemeanor, it's not a lawful arrest, and um, um, so then they got a problem, okay? You don't have to give them anything. And so that's the question. Is there a lawful arrest? And then there's official oppression. A public servant acting under the color of his officer employment commits an offense if he intentionally subjects another to mistreatment or to arrest, detention, search, seizure, dispossession, assessment, or lien that he knows is unlawful. Intentionally denies or impedes another in the exercise or enjoyment of any right, privilege, power, immunity, knowing his conduct is unlawful. Or, for purposes of this section, a public servant acts under color of his office or employment if he acts or purports to act in an official capacity or takes advantage of such actual or purported capacity. In other words, if he's wearing that military police uniform, he's purporting to act in an official capacity. And if he goes and um, arrests you for something that's not a crime, then that's, that's uh, official oppression. Okay, that's exactly what it is. I filed criminal complaints against these these pigs, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, I guarantee you that if I get a good result, then I'll be making a video about it and telling the world. Um, but again, this is Texas. Okay, you got to look for similar things in your state. If you're in Texas, then then great, great. You got you got a basically a turnkey uh, a way of doing things. If you're not in Texas. You can still do it, but you're going to have to defend it. And you're going to have to be prepared with stuff like this Texas Penal Code that's equivalent stuff in your local state so that, so that you can go after them because you got to plan on there's going to be brain-dead idiots out there that are going to want to take advantage of you. And so you got to be ready for it. You cannot sit there and hope that it's not going to happen. you got to be ready for it. Um, anyways... Um, so you got to find similar things to this in your state and similar things to official oppression, similar things to this failure to identify, similar things to this abuse of official capacity, and, 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 um, um, and that will give you a remedy in your state. Um, and so uh, that's, that's what you're going to have to do. Oh, and then there's impersonating a public servant too. A person commits an offense if he impersonates a public servant with intent to induce another to submit to his pretended official authority or to rely on his pretended official acts or knowingly purports to exercise any function of a public servant or a public office, including that of a judge in court, and the position or office through which he purports to exercise a function of a public servant or public office has no lawful existence under the constitutional laws of the state or of the United States. And this is a felony, okay? Now... Impersonating public servants a felony, and so is official oppression. So, and that's in Texas again. And I know that other states have stuff similar to this because I've seen it. I've seen it in New York. I've seen it in Arizona. I've seen it in, in, in other states for sure. But again, you have to find it and have it ready, okay? Um, but that's what they're doing is they're, once they, because once they step outside their legitimate authority, then they're not working for the government anymore. So now they're impersonating a public servant, right? That's exactly what's going on. When liberty and freedom are at stake, your silence isn't golden, it's yellow. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Now, so you can, you can use your own plates. Um, you have to be able to defend it. You got to be prepared for a worst case scenario where the, the, the pigs attack you and, and you got to know what you're going to do and be prepared to, to deal with it. Um, and trying to put all that stuff together after the fact is almost impossible, especially if you're in jail. Uh, it will be impossible. And so 
so uh, the best defense is a good offense. You've got to treat this like it's warfare. It is warfare. And, and the best defense is a good offense. You've got to go on the attack. And, and that's why what I do is I send one of my notice and demands to the county sheriff. And, um, and next time these pigs stop me, quite frankly, I'm going to be dialing 911 saying, I need the county sheriff out here. There's some official oppression going on. And because I send my notices to the county sheriff, and I've never had any trouble at all with county sheriffs. And so, so I think I think the reason I haven't is because they know that their duty, and and uh, so, so it's it's these city pigs that like to assault you, and 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 uh, the higher brain dead idiots, and all the rest of it. Uh, anyways, I appreciate you watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, spread it around uh, because I need your help uh, to overcome all of this demonetization. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.